All right. <clears throat> so one uh, core problem of retail is actually finding out or determining the right quantity of products to stock, right? So you want to you don't want to have too much that you cannot sell those items. You know, it may go bad and you have to salvage. And you don't want to have too little that you, you know, you cannot meet customer demand, right? So finding this right balance is actually a pretty tough problem. It is even harder if you consider that it's not only finding the right quantity, but also determining where to place these products, when to place them, and actually what to sell. To make it even harder, uh, we need to think in terms of the future, right? Because uh, as, a, as a retailer, uh, consider that it takes time for a vendor to send us uh, their items and it takes time for us to send the items for, uh, to fulfill to a customer or, for, or as, as a customer has to pick them up in the stores, right? Now, uh, in grocery retail, uh, as uh, Wei mentioned, some of the challenges we have, it's even harder, right? Because first of all, uh, for grocery, there is this need of ultra fast delivery, which means that to be able to fulfill uh, a product or a product in hours, right? You have to have the products closer to the demand, which also means that um, you placing these products in kind of more metropolitan areas or places where there's less space or smaller fulfillment centers or stores. This means that you have, you're kind of working under space constraints. You cannot stock everything, right? You have to choose exactly what you stock in a certain location. So that's one challenge, this, this aspect of a space constraint that you have. The second challenge, uh, again mentioned uh, previously, right, is that, you know, you have to deal with freshness. Products have a short shelf life, which means that you have a temporal constraint that you have to walk through and, and, and react quickly. You have to decide quickly where to put items and, and there's no opportunity to rebalance those items or to maneuver them around because they do have a short shelf life, right? So given uh, this hard problem of finding the right balance, under temporal constraints and space constraints, right? How do we solve them? And we solve them with a combination of machine learning, uh, optimization or constraint optimizations, and we tie it all up with big data, right? So, so I'll walk through exactly how we do that. Um, and I'll start with a very simple scenario here, just so we understand, right, as a, as a template, right? So consider that you have your consumers, they can be going to the stores, as shown here on the graph on this topology, you have consumers that are also uh, being fulfilled from FCs. These are uh, end nodes, uh, given their the space constraint, they often will place items upstream on what we call a distribution center, which is the subject of the next talk, right? And the vendors, uh, uh, again, going even more upstream, they send the products to the DCs, which then replenish the end nodes with the stores and FCs. Right? So just keep that topology in mind. So let's start with machine learning. Right? So the first place where we use machine learning, uh, and I'm starting upstream here, is to help us uh, predict the preferred vendor under certain conditions. Right? So given a product, given a season of the year, we use uh, different machine learning models, one of which is a, a random forest uh, supervised classification model, which has hundreds of attributes, such as uh, the vendor location um, and, and so on. Next, given that you select the vendor, we also use machine learning to determine uh, the lead time or essentially the time it takes for a vendor to send us their products to, for example, here, uh, a distribution center. In this particular case, we use a, a regression model, which is based on time series, essentially the time, uh, the historical time it has taken in the past for the vendors to send those types of products to, uh, through that destination. And then going even more downstream, 
you also we also use machine learning to determine the customer demand for the products. And this one is interesting one because we combine both uh, uh, previously types of models. So we essentially use uh, deep learning, uh, which has both a time series piece as well as a contextual set of attributes similar to the random forest uh, classification case. Uh, so here's a, is a more involved model combining all the techniques from the previous two cases, right? So now that we have, we you know having done this, it means now we have we understand some of these rent, uh, these uh, stochastic variables of the problem. Now, now with those variables, and with so other static variables such as the cost of transferring items, uh, we are now ready to optimize the solution, trying to find out the ideal quantity. I'm calling here Q. Uh, that, as I mentioned before. Uh, makes makes so that we we don't have out of stock, as well as we don't have surplus inventory. Right now, in the language of of optimization system, uh, we would rephrase this slightly different. We say that we want to optimize so that we minimize the cost of out of stock, and we minimize the cost of a uh, 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 surplus inventory. And we do it over several days in the future, because as you guys remember, it takes time for the vendors to send us products. Now, the way we solve this problem using uh, actually a pretty basic technique of using of, of dynamic programming, right? Uh, if you guys recall dynamic programming, uh, it, it, it's a, you essentially have this complex problem, you break it up into sub problems, right? So one example how we can do that is say each sub problem is a is the fact that we're dealing with a different day in the future. Right? So one problem is finding the ideal quantity in the DC, in the FC for day, let's say from now, we want to do a one week in the future. So you know seven days in the future. Then from that we use those results to help us determine six days in the future, five days in the future, and so on. Right? Now the challenge of this is uh, if you guys done dynamic programming in the past, it's a pretty, extens a, a, a pretty expensive set of operations. And considering that we have so many products, thousands or hundreds and thousands of products, right? It, it, wouldn't, it, it would be hard to make it scale, right? You definitely wouldn't be able to make it scale in a single machine. So how do we solve that problem, right? In other words, given that we need to handle the temporal constraint, the space constraint, uh, uh, and, in, and to handle those, we need a uh, precision on the quantity that we determine, the location we term, determine, how do we, we need to do it at a product level for each specific product. And so how do we do that at scale? So this is where uh, the, the final piece of the puzzle ties in here. And we use uh, uh, the MapReduce algorithm implemented on top of AWS EMR. Uh, to scale out this optimization problem, right? So, we, uh, so again, we we started with a bunch of uh, variables, some of which are uh, stochastic variables that we determine using machine learning. Then we use uh, dynamic programming, and now we're going to tie that up with MapReduce to scale, right? Um, if you guys, I'm, I'm sure some of you guys have used MapReduce before, right? But the whole idea is you, you're able to do this. Uh, uh, you break up your problem into operations that are uh, uh, distributable, distributable and can run independently, and those are done in your, on your mapper. Right? And then your reducer kind of puts all back together. So what are we doing here is um, running each dynamic programming problem for a product at a, uh, in a separate mapper. Right? So, so, so essentially you have a mapper per product running those distributed programming uh, problem, right? Now, the, the issue is how, uh, remember that you calculate those quantities in for a single location. So because the mappers are running independently, how do you make sure that the quantity they come up with it doesn't cross the total amount of storage that you have in a location, right? So in other words, how do you handle the case of a global context? And as I'm sure you guys guessed, right, we do that on the reducer. However, this is slightly more complicated because 
you know, how do you optimize on Redo? So you, you, how do you, you don't want to use that make a program in there because it wouldn't scale. You're back to the initial problem, right? So what we do is likely different there. So we assume a cost for storage, right? And then again, we still run the map of the dynamic programming problem, but now you also optimize considering uh, that storage cost that was assumed, right? And then your reducer, uh, first thing it does is after it gets collects the information from all the mappers, make sure the total quantity doesn't cross the total amount of storage you have, right? However, if it does cross, then we, in other words, you, you calculated a, a, the, the sum of all the quantities more than the storage you have, you have, you have to deal with that, right? So the way we do that is uh, inside the reducer, we now assume a penalty for using storage or more storage than you have available. And we calculate the penalty using yet another optimization problem inside the reducer which in fact is based on some techniques we learn on deep learning at the very beginning. Essentially, we use the same stochastic graded descent algorithm the one used in deep learning. And the, the reason for that is uh, this algorithm scales better and also, uh, but, but it's, more, uh, it's more of an approximation different than you know, what you do in DP on the, in the dynamic programming, right? So we approximate what would be the ideal penalty for using more storage than one has available on the reducer, right? Using uh, uh, graded descent. Now of that new cost, and remember here is the case where you end up using more storage than you could have, should have used. So we came up with a new cost. And now using the new cost, you rerun the whole map reduce algorithm. Right? So it's kind of like an outer loop on top of that map reduce. Uh, and, and now the conditions are that either you uh, are under the total storage or you stipulate a maximum number of iterations that you can go through. Uh, and, and more than that, it's not worthwhile to continue optimizing. Okay, so in summary here, giving uh, to, to have really the best customer experience and, and be able to do handle those challenges such as the stringent temporal and space constraints that we have for grocery, right? We had to do something quite unique here, which is uh, starting with machine learning, then incorporating constraint optimizations inside uh, kind of a, a mapper, and then have a reducer that does another level of optimization as an outer loop over the top of the whole map reduce solution, which, which I think is, is quite unique. Uh, I'm not sure anyone else is kind of doing this. Um, so I, I spoke about the whole topology here, right? And how we able to calculate using just techniques, the ideal quantity, so they don't have too much and you don't have too little in each one of these nodes. Right now, for the next presentation, uh, Jake is going to talk specifically about the distribution center, which is his hub to the overall system and, and plays a very important role. Uh, let me hand it off. Yeah, thanks, Jake.